Hi, welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyana Sundaram, consultant neonatologist. We have had a series on uh, breast milk, the specific aspects, the evolution of breast milk, an overview of the composition. In this current video, we will be discussing three main components of breast milk which give us the energy, proteins, fat and lactose. I hope uh, you find some useful information from this and do subscribe, keep notifications on and do share. So the first part is about proteins. Where during early lactation, the protein content ranges from 1.4 to 1.6 grams per 100 ml. This might be slightly on the higher side in the mothers who give birth to premature babies. It reduces to 0.8 to 1 grams per 100 ml after 3 to 4 months and to 0.7 to 0.8 gram per 100 ml after 6 months when the baby is expected to have started complementary feeding. There are two classes of protein in the breast milk, casein and whey. Casein is a type of uh, protein which becomes clots or curds in the stomach uh, while whey remains as a liquid and it's easier to digest. So the importance of casein comes from uh, satiety because it's a thicker curd, it uh, keeps the baby calmer and the whey is easier to digest and uh, obviously it's more friendly to the digestive system. Uh, the hungry baby milks which are produced in the market basically have more casein while the regular formulas which are currently produced are more humanized so the whey content is higher uh, 60% to 40% while in human milk the whey casein ratio fluctuates between 70 to 30% of uh, case, whey to casein and uh, it can be as high as 80 and 20 in some stages. Later on in lactation, it reduces to 50% each. Obviously, when you compare with cow's milk, it's mainly casein, which is a predominant protein. And uh, only 18% of the cow's milk is whey protein. The main whey proteins that are included are alpha-lactalbumin, lactoferrin, and secretory IgA. The other proteins include lysozyme, the folate binding protein, bifidus factor, casein, enzymes like lipase and amylase, which help digestion as well. After ingestion, the proteins are broken down rapidly to free amino acids for absorption and utilization, which is the main purpose of protein intake. However, there is also a bioactive function of these breast milk proteins. And uh, alpha-lactalbumin, for example, is essential for lactose synthesis and binding of calcium and zinc ions. Casein assists to form masses with calcium and phosphorus. And uh, lactoferrin and the lysozyme prevent the spread of potentially pathogenic bacteria and IgA also destroys bacteria and protects the mucosal surface of the gut. There is a variation in the protein content as we discussed earlier. The preterm baby's mother's milk produces breast milk higher protein content and this can be widely varied. So we always see uh, some preterm babies gaining weight poorly with their breast milk alone, sometimes even with the fortifier added. This is because of the very wide protein range in the breast milk it can range from 0.7 grams to 1.8 to 2 grams even so depending on that particular mother's protein content so, so certain breast milk uh, may need higher protein supplements and uh, if the baby shows consistently poor weight gain despite all signs pointing to adequate milk intake this lower protein intake could be a factor and we may need to add protein separately if possible the healthy babies can compensate with a higher volume intake but preterm babies might need supplementing as we regulate their fluid intake. A quick uh, mention of the fats in breast milk. Fats are a very important component. Firstly, they spare the energy of the protein. So the proteins are utilized for body growth and uh, enzymes and repair and so on. Uh, the one gram of fat will give nine kilocalories and so they supply energy. They also are important for the development of the central nervous system. The milk fat is a main component where the taste and aroma originates from. It can differ from uh, each mother and the baby is able to uniquely identify the mother's own breast milk. The human breast milk fat range comes from uh, 3.5 to 4.5 percent. Triglyceride account for 95 percent of the total lipids. The fatty acids in the milk include palmitic acid, oleic acid and others. We also have the essential fatty acids, linoleic and alpha-linolenic acid. These can be converted in the body to the other essential fatty acids, arachidonic acid, EPA and DHA. And as we are aware, the DHA is very important for regulating growth, inflammatory response, immune function, 
vision and cognitive development as well as motor systems in the newborns. The most important component that I'll discuss which has some unique features is lactose. Lactose is the most abundant carbohydrate of most mammalian milk types and mammalian milk is the only known source of significant amounts of lactose in nature. Human milk contains around 70 grams per liter of lactose and even though quantity wise it's more than the lipids because of the carbohydrates giving 4 grams per hundred, I mean uh, 4, 4 kilocalories per gram, the breastfeeding babies meet about 40% of their energy intake from the lactose. Bovine milk has a lower level of lactose which is 46 grams per liter. Lactose is a disaccharide formed by glucose and galactose linked by a beta 1,4 glucosidic bond. Uh, the lactose is digested or broken down by the beta -galax galactosidase enzyme which is commonly called as lactase enzyme. It's bound to the brush pod or membrane of the small intestine of the suckling mammals. The monosaccharides glucose and galactose are both actively absorbed in the small intestine. So it's an energy consuming process for the mother to convert the glucose to galactose then combine the glucose and galactose to form lactose. Similarly, the baby also needs energy to split the lactose and convert it to glucose and galactose to be absorbed. So why should nature prefer lactose as a milk sugar? So there are various reasons and we will discuss them as we go on. Galactose is a major component of oligosaccharides and via galactosylation it is incorporated in the glycolipids and glycoproteins where it serves multiple roles in the early human development. Galactose is also incorporated into the brain myelin lipids. It has been suggested that lactose in mammalian milk might have a role as a substrate for synthesis of these galactolipids. A correlation has been suggested between brain development and lactose content of the milk in different species. However, galactose can originate from endogenous synthesis and uh, this is also highest in the infancy and early childhood when brain growth is a maximum and this is likely to be incorporated into the galactolipids of the brain. There is no strong evidence that the galactose intake is needed for brain development. Studies have shown similar cognitive development in children fed milk based and uh, soy based which is lactose free infant formula. It could be that nature wants to protect us from uh, galactose deficiency which might happen by chance as if you don't have the galactose ready in the milk there may be impairment of the brain development if the nourishment is not adequate. So, uh, supplying the lactose in the milk could be one way of ensuring galactose intake is adequate in the baby. And uh, in contrast to the protein and fat, the lactose content is fairly constant in the mature milk. The reason this is constant is the lactose has a osmolar uh, effect. It's important for uh, the water content of the milk being maintained and the constant osmotic pressure. So the lactose and the uh, water is high in the fore milk where the baby is feeding to quench thirst. Lactose also aids in the absorption of minerals including calcium. In the breast milk, most of the carbohydrate based bioactive compounds such as the oligosaccharides and HMOs are attached to lactose. There is a lower effect of, uh, on the dentition in terms of uh, caries. So uh, anti-cariogenic effect of lactose compared to other sugars is there. Lactose does not stimulate the reward center of the brain so the baby is unlikely to feed out of greed and feeds more for necessity and satiety. So unlike the normal sugar glucose which can make you have a sweet tooth and consume more, lactose doesn't encourage that so the baby feeds more for the requirements. So lactose is also not uh, regarded as a non-digestible food because if you have the lactase enzyme it's digested. However, if the enzyme level is not adequate all the ingested lactose may not be broken down and some of it reaches the large intestine. It can be fermented by the colonic microbiota and uh, lactate as well as short chain fatty acids and gas are formed. So in this case the lactose may be considered as a partial prebiotic and uh, if the amount is large it can cause negative effects of lactose intolerance as we will see next. Along with the human milk oligosaccharides the lactose contributes to the gut microbiota composition. So lactobacilli, bifidobacterium uh, are predominant in breastfed babies and it's partly because of the effect of lactose acting as a prebiotic, especially in the initial stages when the lactase enzyme is still being upgraded. So lactase enzyme upregulates in the newborn period. So as soon as the baby is born, uh, nature knows that lactose is going to be the main sugar. So 
there is an upregulation of the lactase production majority of the babies don't have a problem with lactose intolerance apart from possibly transient discomfort during the phase when the balance is being reached so this could be nature's design as well as to why the breast milk gradually increases in volume if the baby gets a larger quantity uh, of the milk than they can digest it's possible they may have slight intolerance so it's better to encourage spontaneous uh, breastfeeding where the baby regulates the intake and probably the baby will take as much as needed suppose there is uh, excessive uh, features of lactose intolerance you can consider reducing the intake uh, or advise the mother at least not to overfeed however this doesn't mean you have to change the milk from breast milk breast milk and breastfeeding have to be supported uh, in all situations so i would suggest you refer the earlier video on lactose intolerance i'll provide the link in the uh, uh, information on this video it has been suggested that lactose non digesting adults and premature infants who have a low or immature production of lactase should not avoid the lactose fully they rather consume smaller amounts frequently to obtain the beneficial effects uh, as well as avoid lactose intolerance symptoms it has also been shown in adults that long term ingestion of lactose can lead to reduced uh, lactose intolerance and uh, this adaptation may be due to changes in the microbiota or because over time as they continue to be exposed there may be an upregulation of lactase for the same reason we shouldn't stay on a lactose free formula for a prolonged period of time unless it's essential so uh, in the next video we will discuss uh, other components uh, including human milk oligosaccharides and uh, i hope uh, this is helpful do uh, subscribe